Part 1, the reactivity of n heterocyclic carbene with antimony tree fluoride. Because all the initial uh, reactions gave negative results, we said, why don't we use a metal substrate, fluoride substrate, that is at least sparingly soluble, and try to learn from this uh, system. And for the first reaction, we tried uh, to mix it with carbene in tetrahydrofuran as a polar aprotic uh, solvent, and um, the reaction yielded a new type of imidazolium salt. Uh, we managed to fully characterize it, and although this is a, a side product, uh, we managed to draw two important conclusions from this one. Uh, the first is that the source uh, of the protons responsible for imidazolium cation formation are solvent molecules, and second, all three imidazolium protons are highly labile and can easily undergo a hydrogen deuterium exchange. Now, uh, because polar uh, solvents can favor uh, ionic uh, products, we said why don't we try to perform the reaction in toluene. However, even at prolonged reaction times under harsh uh, reaction conditions, no re reaction was observed and this was attributed to negligible uh, solubility of antimony trifluoride in toluene. Nevertheless, you can do a little trick, that is uh, literature uh, findings uh, report that antimony trifluoride can easily be complexed with different amino, phosphino or uh, ether uh, ligands and uh, form uh, complexes. For that purpose we chose tetramethylethylene diamine uh, ligand which gave us uh, the product in quantitative uh, yields. We managed to fully characterize it and here I would just like to say that uh, this complex has profound solubility in toluene. So it can be used as, uh, as uh, antimony trifluoride syncton uh, in uh, nonpolar solvents. And we did the next reaction. We took our complex and uh, mixed it with uh, carbene. Hopefully that the carbene would displace the amino ligand and form a neutral uh, product that we were searching. But that didn't happen. What happened is we got uh, such, uh, such a product. So again, an ionic uh, product, but if you take a closer look, this one is uh, a bit uh, special. And uh, you can see that uh, it represents uh, autoionization product of antimony 3 fluoride. Namely, two SBF3 molecules form SBF2 plus an SBF4 uh, minus uh, ions. We've also managed to uh, characterize it with crystal structure analysis and from it you can see that one of the carbanes uh, binds to uh, SBF2 moiety uh, normally via C2 position, however the second one binds abnormally via C4 uh, position and it, this uh, complex represents the first example of uh, abnormally bound uh, carbane on any metal or metalloid fluoride uh, up to date. But the formation of this product opened more questions than it solved. Namely, we wanted to know what is the mechanism of this conversion. We just knew the input and the output we got uh, in the solid, but we didn't know what's happening in the solution. Uh, and more directly, we wanted to know if this auxiliary uh, ligand uh, that helped us with uh, solubility is responsible for such uh, transformation. And we wanted to test it, uh, this, and we said, why don't we, instead of the main ligand, use dimethoxyethane? Uh, it is also a coordinating ligand, uh, and when we did this reaction, the reaction got us uh, the same result. And then we were wondering, are both or neither uh, responsible uh, for, for uh, autoionization product uh, formation? And the meta was suggested in previous research that it acts as a base. In some point in during the mechanism it gets protonated and then deprotonated again. But if that would be true in the case of uh, dimethoxyethane, if ethers get protonated, we could expect CO bond uh, cleavage. So in the reaction mixture, we would maybe uh, have to observe some uh, hydrolysis product of uh, dimethoxyethane. That's why we decided to perform all of these uh, reactions in deuterated solvents and uh, observe the reaction mixtures with uh, NMR. And in the NMR spectra, what we could see is we only have three uncoordinated uh, dimethoxyethane and uh, thiamine uh, ligands. Moreover, in the case of dimethoxyethane, no hydrolysis product or anything else was uh, observed. From the 
methyl protons of Harbane ligand, for both reactions we observe the same trend and that is magnetic unequivalence of these protons got uh, bigger and this trend uh, was observed for both reactions. From that we concluded that in the solution the auxiliary ligands are displaced and we get a neutral coordination compound. Then with a bit of a research and creativity we could easily uh, find a logical uh, mechanism and propose it how uh, the formation of our uh, product goes. And to our luck and excitement, although uh, the post mechanism, uh, it was additionally substantiated uh, by the researchers from uh, Oxford in another Dalton transaction paper uh, a few months uh, ago. So, if we recap this first part, we described the synthesis and characterization of rare SBF2 plus cation. We concluded that anhydrocyclic carbene cause antimony trifluoride autoionization process. Uh, the autoionization product uh, features first uh, mesoionic uh, and heterocyclic carbene uh, rearrangement on any metal or metal fluoride to date. Uh, we performed uh, mechanistic studies. Uh, we showed that structural analysis in, is in full accordance with uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion model, and we successfully used antimony 3 fluoride thiamine uh, reagent that represents a soluble antimony 3 fluoride synton in nonpolar solvents.